Welcome to the start of a three-part tutorial series. During this tutorial series, we're going to be creating ping pong in Scratch. And this is how the game is going to work. If you click on the flag, we're going to be given the option to either play one player or two player. So if we click on one player, we'll be going against a computer controlled AI. And if they score, then a point is going to be added to their side. And we can also choose to play two player. And that's when we have both sides of the keyboard being used to play the game. So we have two different players controlling the two pads. So let's begin. To get started, we're going to be removing this default scratch and we're going to be going into our backdrop and we're going to edit this. So we're going to convert this to bitmap select the fill icon and decrease the brightness and then select this line and increase the brightness and then decrease saturation and then we're going to look um, as best as we can for the middle so round about here so we're going to create one single line and then we're going to click the select icon copy and paste the line to make sure that we have same length lines and then we can just copy and paste lines for the game background and what you can do is maybe do one more line first convert it to vector and then just have this be a line that isn't fully showing in the game and convert it back to bitmap now we have our background done we can go to the code and we're going to go to when flag is clicked we're going to then broadcast a message called start game and this is so that we have a main menu in our game um right now we're just going to say when flag is clicked broadcast start game and now we can paint a brand new sprite this is going to be our player one pad and we're going to use this box and decrease the saturation to make it white and now choose around a great length and not too much of a width and something around here works okay now that we now that we have our pad we're going to put this in the middle and move our pad somewhere around here now we're going to go to the code and first set our player one pad to zero on the y axis and negative two to 20 on the x axis. Now we're going to go to the when flag is clicked and when flag is clicked, we're going to then hide. We're going to hide our pad, but then it's going to show because we're going to broadcast start game and then show it then and this is just start game is then going to be broadcasted later in our main menu buttons but we're just doing this to make the integration of the main menu easier later on in the game now we're also going to go to motion and select the go to and we're going to do this when i receive start game and then go bring a forever loop or actually let's move this and create another message and we're going to call this when i receive reset and this would be good for later on as well so when i receive the message reset and then we'll broadcast the resetting of the position at the beginning of the game now we're going to go to control and bring in two if statements and then put one if statement into each if statement as well. Now we're going to say if the W key is pressed, since our player one is on the left side, we'll have them using the left controls. So if W is pressed, and then duplicate this and change this to S. And then we're going to put this in the if statements that are 
not enclosing the other if statements and then we're going to look if and then bring in motion and say if the y position is less than 140 then we can change our y by 5 so let's bring the change by y and change y by actually it should be better and then we can just duplicate this and make this negative 8 instead now we're going to go to operators and bring in the greater than operator and go back to motion and bring the y position and make this negative 140. Now what we're doing here is we're making sure that our paddle can't go too low or too high and I'll show that here. Our paddle stops at the top and at the bottom and I'll show you what would happen if we didn't have this here. We would, let me click flag and bring this here. So we'd be able to go too low and that's not what we want. So let's bring this back here. Now, that's all we need for our player one pad. Now we, we can now duplicate this and call this player two pad. And instead we're going to make this the opposite. So make this 220 and make this y axis zero. And now we're going to have a little problem. So player two, we need its reset to be 220. And instead make this the up arrow and the down arrow. So now we can move both of our paddles. And now, now that we have our two players in the game that can move up and down, we're now going to add a ball into the game. So we're going to start by up by painting a brand new sprite and we're going to select this circle right here and just create as even a circle as possible and then bring that there maybe make it a bit smaller a little bit smaller around this size should be fine and then we can see it's a bit too wide or yeah, it looks yeah right here is fine now we're going to also make sure it's centered that's very important and we're going to make sure it's centered as well that's very important and then we're going to go to the code and first rename this ball and then we're going to go into our player one pad and we're going to bring in an if statement and this is statement is going to look if we are not touching the ball. We do not want our pad to move while we're touching the ball. Um, that will cause a glitch in our game later on. So let's bring in another if statement, cover all the if statements here. And we're going to say if not touching the ball. Okay now we have that coded up we can now go to our ball sprite and the first thing we're going to do is go to our one flag is clicked we want to hide our ball and then we're going to go to events and say when i receive reset we're then going to create a brand new variable called ball direction so our first variable we're just going to set this ball direction and with this we're going to choose if the ball goes to our first player or our second player so we're just going to need one or two and once we've decided which direction we're going so we're going to look which direction we've chosen by using equals to operators and then bring in the ball direction as well and then we look if ball direction equals to one or if ball direction equals to two. And then we're going to bring in motion and we're going to have it point in direction. I'm not going to have it face directly towards the pad. Instead, we're going to make this random as well. 
So we're going to make this 70 at 2, 120. And duplicate this and make this negative 70 and negative 120. Those are the positions it's going to face. And then we we'll also want it to go to the exact middle. So set this to 0 by 0. And then we're going to go to variables and set. So we need to create a brand new variable. And this one is going to be called the ball speed. And we're going to set the ball speed to eight. So the higher you set the ball speed, the harder the game is going to be. Now we're going to go to our events and we're going to select when I receive start game. And when we do receive start game, we want to reset our ball first and once you've reset our ball we're then going to forever and then just have it move and if on edge bounce then set this to ball speed now we can watch our ball move once we bring in the show when I receive start game now we see our ball is moving in both directions, but it does not have any effect when touching the pad. So let's work on that now. So firstly, we're going to go to our forever loop and what we're going to be doing is look if, so bring in an or operator and an if statement. So look if, and then we're going to look if we're touching either the player one pla pad or touching the player two pad. And if it's touching any of these, then we're going to have it point in direction, its current direction. But then we're going to want it to, to go into the opposite direction. So we're going to multiply that by negative one. And then once we've multiplied it by negative one, we also want a bit of randomness. So we're then going to add another random value from negative 50 to positive 50. And that's what we're going to add. And then we're going to have it move in ball steps so whatever the ball speed steps is and then change our ball speed by 0 0.5 actually let's change it by one and then go to control and we're going to simply just wait 0 0.5 seconds now we can see our ball can be bounced off our pads so now we can you know attempt to make sure that the other player doesn't get hit with our pads so our ball speed also increases as you can see with this variable right here so that's all for this video thank you very much for watching make sure to smash that like button and turn on post notifications and subscribe so you don't miss the next video where we'll be adding a scoring system to the game so we can see who's winning so stay tuned for that goodbye Mm-hmm.